Retina in black. A 92-year-old lady was referred to our practice for vitreous hemorrhage in her only seeing left eye. The problem started several months ago when she was hospitalized for severe cardiac illness. There is a critical piece of information in her medical history that represents key to all the ocular findings, but please allow me to hold it for now. Her past ocular history is remarkable for suprachoroidal hemorrhage in the right eye during a phaco surgery, which ended up with no light perception in that eye. She also underwent uneventful cataract surgery in the left eye with 2030 visual outcome. Clinical examination of the right eye showed physis and disorganized anterior segment with no view to the fundus. Examination of the left eye showed normal anterior segment with centered intraocular lens in the bag and showed dense vitreous opacity with no view to the fundus. Therefore, B scan ultrasound was performed and it showed attached retina confirmed the presence of dense vitreous opacity and posterior vitreous detachment and didn't show any choroidal mass. In light of these findings, the patient was counseled for vitrectomy surgery in the left eye. Vitrectomy surgery was started in the standard fashion. During core vitrectomy, the vitreous opacity appeared to be different from vitreous hemorrhage. It was black in color. And as soon as core vitrectomy was complete and the fundus view was restored, the retina appeared to be completely covered in black, as shown. The distribution of black pigments covering the retina was following gravity, while the superior part of the fundus was uncovered, while the inferior part of the fundus was more densely covered. The patient had history of cutaneous melanoma with metastasis to the original lymph nodes. Now she is presenting with vitreous metastasis of cutaneous melanoma. The dense layer of black melanoma cells covering the surface of the retina represented a physical barrier that decreased the vision of the patient to counting fingers, and it was necessary to remove all these cells in order to restore vision and also to reduce the tumor burden. Here is taken a sample from this material to be sent for pathological analysis. The material was much more adherent towards the posterior pole and was not possible to remove it with the vitrectomy cutter alone. Microforceps was used in an attempt to peel off this material. However, it was crushed between the tips of the forceps and it was not possible to grasp it as one sheet. Therefore, finesse lube was used to sweep it off the surface of the retina, which was a very lengthy and frustrating process. Recording was inadvertently stopped during the use of finesse lube, unfortunately. At the end of the case, it was decided to perform 360 barrier laser because parts of the periphery was covered by dense black material and it was impossible to rule out with confidence any peripheral breaks. This is post-operative appearance and vision was restored to 2040 and the patient was transferred to the care of cutaneous melanoma team. Cutaneous melanoma can metastasize to any part of the uveal tract, including the iris, ciliary body, or choroid and is usually clinically indistinguishable from primary uveal melanoma except by clinical history. It is also treated similarly either by brachytherapy, external radiotherapy, or inoculation. It can also metastasize to the vitreous cavity and can present in different ways, either by vitreous floaters or more severe presentations such as uveitis, retinal detachment, or neovascular glaucoma. Several treatments were reported to treat vitreous metastasis of cutaneous melanoma, including intravitreal injection of milfalan, external beam radiotherapy, and inoculation, depending on severity. Vitrectomy can be performed for diagnostic purposes to confirm pathological diagnosis, and can also be done for therapeutic purpose to remove vitreous opacities. Several FDA-approved chemotherapy options are available for metastatic cutaneous melanoma, including cytotoxic telophocyte antigen for inhibitors, such as epilimumab, and programmed cell death 1 inhibitors such as nivolumab. Those two belong to checkpoint inhibitors. There are also targeted therapy, which include BRAF inhibitors, such as bimurafenib, and MEK inhibitors, such as comibitinib. It's fair to expect ophthalmologists 
to be aware of the ocular side effects of these medications. BRAF inhibitors have been associated with uveitis and uveitic cystoid macular edema. MIC inhibitors have been associated with CSR-like small pockets of subretinal fluid in the posterior pole. Those changes are reversible if the drug is discontinued. Distance and pre-retinal infiltration with melanoma cells can also occur after transvitreal biopsy of primary choroidal melanoma. This is a fundus photograph of MIC inhibitor-associated retinopathy with multiple pockets of subretinal fluid, which is bilateral but asymmetric. This is the appearance of the same lesions on fundus autofluorescence, and this is the OCT of the same lesions. Spontaneous resolution of subretinal fluid is observed after discontinuation of MIC inhibitors. Thanks for watching. I hope this was helpful.